Hi everybody, it's Tuesday and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange to talk about the markets and earnings with Jim Cramer. All right, Jim, let's start off with Netflix, another blowout quarter. Yeah, for I mean, Netflix is all about artificial intelligence, knowing what people want, and therefore being able to make it so that they have far more hits than misses. They have very few misses. And if you do that and you make it so that it's global, you have the ultimate way that I think we would have liked to add TV to begin with, which is uh, they tell us, uh, uh, instead of they telling us what we're supposed to watch, they listen to what we want and they produce it. And that's a different kind of model. And it's a model that works around the world. Let me explain this again. Okay. So, when you watch TV, you're basically watching what they tell you to. When you watch Netflix, what you're watching is what you ask for. And because of that, and you look at Sarandos' comments about Bright, you'll recognize why this stock is not done going higher. And for more on this, you write about that dynamic in Real Money this yes, morning. Yes, absolutely. And is it true you called customer service at 3 a.m. Yeah, once? you know, I, I was just trying to find something that would be incredibly difficult for them to be able to respond to, uh, which was to find good movies about Russia's march to Berlin. Uh, and they gave me a fabulous list. Uh, and we watched them, a documentary, and, and, uh, and also, by the way, they, they had uh, fiction. Uh, drama, and one that was directed by Stalin. A and I was blown away. It was done uh, online instantly, no uh, hesitation. And it's almost as if they were ready for me. And again, they are. And that's that artificial intelligence model that we see. I think we're going to see it with Anthony Noto at SoFi. We see the artificial intelligence model at Spotify. We see the artificial intelligence model being uh, furthered by the people at NVIDIA which is why we like that stock. And I had to admit that we didn't own enough for action alerts. We're on that when we do our action alerts club call after this. Yes, the Netflix story is amazing. I hope the bears are, li are listening. Not done. I mean, look, you know, Netflix, here's where people went wrong with Netflix. They were not thinking that there would be international content that would be beloved all over the globe. It almost was like, too hard. I mean, Time Warner, HBO, they all floated international. There's always been a sense that we, you know, Hollywood has this product and it's loved overseas. Um, and we took that to the next level. I mean, it's almost like Hollywood in the 1930s, where they recognize they can make productions, except for they the next level is to actually have it made overseas, and then we like it here. I mean, you know, come on, when you're watching Narcos, are you at all conscious of the fact that it's not in English? No. Because with Netflix, you read the subtitles. It's remarkable. <laughs> All right, we'll keep watching that one, Jim. Meanwhile, Adobe expecting a substantial drop in their effective tax rate. Right, well, Adobe is a, a company I've liked. You know, we owned it, we may had a home run for action alerts, and then we left it, that was wrong. Uh, because there was a quarter where they indicated that maybe the growth wouldn't be what we thought. We bit on that story, that was incorrect. What they're really saying, they were just giving a you know, tiny cautionary comment. Let's hope Adobe comes in someday so that we can recommend it again. And we know Adobe, of course, is Acrobat, but you say it's the ultimate e-commerce yeah, story. Yeah, they just have a, a, a tremendous amount of, uh, of, if you want to digitize retail, you go to Salesforce and you go to them. Now, Salesforce and Adobe, uh, candidly, are not friends. Uh, Microsoft and Salesforce are not friends. Uh, but Shantanu Narayan has built a, um, a powerhouse of everything from facial recognition drawing to how to keep track of uh, holiday sales, trillions and trillions of pieces of data. Um, I urge people to look at the verticals. There's a lot of verticals that they have. It's not just documents. There's a lot of verticals. And the creative cloud, I mean, I came to Adobe from another side. Um, I have a daughter who is uh, very art-oriented and introduced me to the Adobe that was not Acrobat. Um, and I'm very proud of that because our kids always tell us things that we don't know. And when I met Shantanu for the first time, I told him about what my daughter was doing. And then he told me about what all the daughters are doing, what fabulous stuff. Uh, the idea is, is that you, uh, Adobe makes you look like a professional, even if you're in high school. And that is something to applaud. They've leveled the playing field for people who want to do e-commerce. And when I checked this morning, the market cap of Adobe almost at $100 billion. Yeah, I mean, you know what? The last time Shanta knew I was out in San Francisco, he showed me some, uh, the ability to be able to draw something that looked like you that then became you, which was amazing. Uh, previously, when he came here and we were in the New York Stock Exchange, he showed me a remarkable, remarkable um, 
sound interaction. Remember, uh, sound is everything these days, as we know from uh, Alexa, uh, and, and he's way ahead of it. He's way ahead of it. Uh, virtual reality, he owns it. It's fantastic. Jim, Adobe, of course, benefiting from tax reform. Also, Verizon, too, adding uh, three and a half billion. Yeah, I mean, Verizon, now there's a great back and forth on Twitter uh, between me and uh, at John Ledger. It's actually fascinating, because John is uh, not backing down about calling Verizon the Cleveland Browns, which are truly fighting words. Uh, T-Mobile is growing better than Verizon. I, I like income, too, but the Browns, you call them the Browns. I'm trying to get my arms around that. I haven't gotten my arms around it yet. Well, income, you're referring to the 4.5% dividend. Yes. Okay. Also, Procter & Gamble, organic revenue growth of 2%. What did well, you think I mean, of that? Procter, you know, Nelson's coming in. David Taylor is doing his best to be able to get some growth. Uh, you have to understand that the market itself has a downward bias, say, whether it be Verizon, whether it be Procter & Gamble, J&J. &J. And I can't believe that you're getting another opportunity. Now, uh, is there something else lurking there? I don't know. Um, with a Procter, Kimberly's laying off a lot of people. With a Procter, you got to hope it goes back to the 80s because then the next move may be to the 120s. Uh, J&J, &J, you're getting a chance again because uh, Alex Gorski often involved, often on the comps call, that stock goes down. Why? Because Gorski's like no other. He tells you warts and all. He actually gives you more warts than non-warts. And then you get another chance. You can get to reload in J&J. &J. You're going to get a chance to reload in Procter & Gamble. Verizon's moved up so much. Uh, and, and I have to tell you, um, it, look, the quarter was good, but when Ledger put the spin on it, it knocked the stock down. Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns. Browns. I mean, Jesus, call someone Browns. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you come back from that. <laughs> All right. Jim Kramer, who do you have coming up on Mad Money tonight? Okay. Um, we have an outfit. Uh, if you're a younger person and you're interested in sports, particularly if you're male, uh, then you know this outfit bar stool. Um, I know them as being able to get the best T-shirts for the Eagles. Uh, but we're going to talk about uh, with this with a woman CEO. I think that's important. I only point that out because there are people who say, oh, come on, man. This thing is just like a sexist, blah, blah, blah. I'm well aware of that. And uh, not crazy about it. But I like the e-commerce strategy. And we got to deal with the fact that at times uh, there are companies that are media companies that are actually retail stores that are doing it in unconventional ways. And we can all learn from that. And that's what I intend to do. Learn from Barstool. Okay, we'll be watching tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern on CNBC. Jim and I are going to continue the conversation. Please join us on ActionAlertsPlus.com.